What is up, y'all? This is Andy with Poster Grind, your neighborhood art director that designs movie posters for a living. Today, I'm going to share with you a very easy and fun technique to create some vertical lines that will actually interact with your typography. <laughs> what? All right, y'all, before we move on, I got to give a shout out to an amazing channel called Panther. Panther has awesome tutorials, and that's where I originally learned how to do this technique. However, the reason I'm creating this tutorial is to basically build off what he has shown us and add some flavor, some texture, and to keep it all within Photoshop. So when you get a chance, go check out Panther. All right, y'all, I'm using a resolution of 200 pixels per inch on my template today. So once you have your Photoshop ready to go, your next step is to pick out a texture. I picked up this texture at Envato.com, which has licensed stock photography textures and all sorts of other creative assets for a low fee of 16 bucks a month or 200 bucks a year and that's unlimited downloads. So be sure to use our affiliate link below because if we send them business, they give us a little something something and that helps keep the channel going. All right, let's go ahead and make our horizontal and or vertical lines by using the Photoshop step and repeat technique, which saves a lot of time. So first thing, go over to your rectangle tool and you can either do this vertically or horizontally. It doesn't really matter because we're gonna transform it later on anyway. And now we're going to turn on the step and repeat by using the hotkeys, Option, Command, T. And I believe it's con Control T on Windows. But once you do that, go ahead and select that rectangle. Drag It automatically creates a copy, and we're just going to drag it down like that. Now up here, you see this little check mark. We're going to hit the check mark, and that's going to stop recording. And now all we have to do to make a, a bunch more rectangles is shift option command T, hit that numerous times like so until we fill up the whole page. And I believe that's going to be control alt shift T on a PC. And like that we have this awesome layer to play around with. So I'm gonna hit command T like that. And then I'm just going to make these thinner. And we can turn this into a vertical. Now I'm going to hit Command J, drag another one over, and then I'm gonna hit Command J again and do one more. Something like that. We're going to turn this into a smart object by selecting all, right clicking, going to convert to smart object. Now from here, let's go up to filter and give this a little bit of a Gaussian blur. So I'm gonna to go to blur, Gaussian blur, and we'll go with six and then hit okay. Now let's go ahead and turn that layer off, go below it and hit new layer, hit T on your keyboard and type out a letter. You guys can either use a logo, a letter or whatever you want at this point, but I'm going to be using the word grind, but I'm gonna do this individually so that we can edit the kerning later on. You'll see what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to do individual layers for each letter. Now I'm going to turn each letter into a smart object. Right click, convert to smart object. Then on my letters, I'm going to go to filter Blur, Gaussian blur, and just blur these up a little bit. So I'm gonna give them about a 10. Now to speed up the process, I'm going to go to this little zero or O, hold down option, and drag each filter, each blur filter to each letter. Now I'm gonna go back up to our vertical lines. And now all we have to do is add a threshold layer above that. So I'm gonna go down to threshold, then with threshold, we can play around with the level until we get something that we like. And as you can see, because of the blur, it interacts with the typography. That looks pretty cool. And then you can go mess around with the Gaussian blurs for each one until you get something you like. And it distorts everything nice. But now we have to do some kerning. So I'm just going to play with each layer and drag it over something like that. 
Now, if you guys learned anything up until this point, please hit that like button now. I really appreciate it. Now what we need to do is basically take a snapshot and turn this into its own layer. So to do that, we're gonna go to New Layer, and we're gonna go to Select, and we're gonna go to Color Range. And I want Color Range with the dropper, select the black, hit OK. Now we're gonna go down to Solid Color, leave it on black, hit OK, and we can turn this into a Smart Object. By right-clicking, go to Smart Object. Now these other layers that we use to create this whole entire thing, we can just go and turn it into its own group, turn that group off, and now, as you can see, we have this graphic that's ready to rock, be exported, whatever you wanna do with it. But what I like to do is play around with either the pinch or spherize. So let's check out pinch really quick. And that's going to give it a little bit of a dimensionality situation, which is cool because of the lines like that. And then you can just mess around with how much you want and or don't want to use. So that's one cool option. The other cool option is go back up to filter, distort, spherize, same thing, but it's going to go in the other direction like that. So awesome techniques. Uh, the last little bit of icing on the cake is to have this interact with our texture in the background by double clicking on our graphic layer, go to layer styles, and then under line layer. Now with holding down the option key, we're gonna drag a piece of the white arrow to the left like so, and that's going to blend in with our paper and give us this awesome distorted effect.